The little white chapel of La Lomita, adorned with its simple cross, sits tucked away in deep south Texas near the city of Mission. It is peaceful here, tranquil. La Lomita has a connection personally and spiritually to just about everyone here, says Father Roy Snipes. And a lot of people tell you, my, my grandparents were married here, my great-grandparents were married here. It's a very, very much intertwined in the, the lo our love for God and our love for this place and our, our love for each other. Wearing his Stetson hat, Father Roy is known for good reason as the cowboy priest. He is also the face of the movement to keep the chapel out of the shadow of a wall. You're talking about putting up a wall. The wall would be there. Yeah. It'd go along that levee. That's where the donkeys, our old donkeys, and, or, and our old uh, llama, the camel, is, are buried there. You see, the little chapel sits about a mile from the Rio Grande River and the border with Mexico. Placing a barrier here to stop the flow of undocumented migrants and drug traffickers has been discussed for more than a decade. Only now it seems more imminent than ever. And if it's built atop the levee, La Lomita Chapel would be cut off from the people who have worshipped here for generations. We have to say this is crazy, of putting a wall between us and the chapel. You got billions of dollars, you could do anything. Don't do that. Father Roy's two dogs, Charlotte and Bandito, are always close by, keeping him company when no one else is here. Inside the chapel, the walls tell the story of age, the adobe cracking and peeling. According to the architecture, this could have built, been built like in the 1840s or I'd say it's over 100, it could have been over 150 years 150 old, right? for sure, yeah. The altar is covered in flowers and candles. Charlotte makes a veil of the white lace altar cloth hanging down. Look at her. She looks like a bride, doesn't she? <laughs> La Lomita is not the only place threatened by the possibility or perhaps the probability of a wall. Along the border, hundreds of miles are dotted with homes, businesses, and tracts of land that could be taken by the U.S. government for its wall. Called eminent domain, it gives the government the power to take private land or property. Ruben Villarreal is the former mayor of Rio Grande City. We're entitled to our rights of, as property owners. So here you have federal government taking people's property for a questionable technology that's going to cost billions of dollars that may or may not secure the border. While eminent domain is supposed to require the government to pay a fair price for seized property, that, Villarreal says, isn't happening. Uh, the government comes in and they lowball them every single time. They come in here and they offer you pennies on the pennies on the dollar. Nida Alvarez, a school teacher, says the government is doing just that to her. They come in and say the only thing we can discuss is a price. A price, really? And they start at $100. You think I'm going to... $100? $100. You think that won't even pay the movers? Think I'm going to go build somewhere else with $100? For the entire property, $100. That's where they start off with. If you look at the paperwork, it says nominal. They use the word nominal. So they don't care. They just want to get us out of here. But Alvarez isn't selling. In fact, Knight is so angry, she got on her roof and painted a sign. In bold white letters, it reads, no border wall. Nida says the plan is for the 25-foot high structure to cut right through her yard. And they're trying to build the wall and they want to put it right here where we're standing. Right where we're standing. Right here where we're standing because there's the crisis. It's all peace and quiet here. I don't see anything at all. Knight and her friend Yvette Gaitan showed us documents they received from the government requesting access to survey their lands. Permission they've not given. There was also the insert from a local newspaper. Thirteen thousand dollars. That's one person. Mm -hmm. But hold 3, on. Three thousand. Three thousand. It's a list of properties and how much the government wants to pay for each parcel. One thousand. Seven hundred. Seven hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred. Both Nida and Yvette say their families have been on this land for generations. My grandparents used to live here wow. in the house that's falling down over there. We rode with them down to the Rio Grande River. A wall would block this view. It's 
So how many generations has your family been here? Five generations. Five generations. Mm -hmm. And always lived here along the, always. the Rio Grande, yes. which is beautiful. We requested interviews with members of the U.S. Congress, both Democrats and Republicans, who represent these people along the border. Our repeated requests were either denied or ignored. During our last trip to the border, we spoke with Chief Manuel Padilla, at the time the head of Border Patrol for this area. When you're deploying, uh, and it's a wall system, it includes technology, it includes, uh, you know, the, uh, the wall or the fence combination thereof, and also factors in the right level of personnel. So when you deploy personnel, technology, and infrastructure in an appropriate manner, what it does is, in very, very basic terms, it increases your ability to detect anything and anybody that is crossing illegally between the ports of entry. This is the National Butterfly Center. It sits about two miles from the border with Mexico. Here, hundreds of species of butterflies and birds make their home. But the wall could cut a huge swath through this sanctuary. Mariana Trevino Wright is executive director of the center. We had one guy that called five times and uh, we finally blocked him on the phone system. He was calling from California to say that um, it was basically, I hope MS-13 gets a hold of you and rapes and That's, murders you or are your you children. Kidding? Threatening mail and phone calls are constant, Mariana says, because the Butterfly Center is fighting to keep the wall off its 100 acres of land. So Bugglers. how much do you end up losing? We could lose 70% of our property. 70%? That would basically wipe out this, I mean, would that not wipe out the butterfly sanctuary? For the most well, part? it'll leave the 30 acres north of the levee with the visitor's pavilion and the native plant nursery and so the old gardens, yes. The fight with the government, Trevino Wright says, began two years ago. It's July 20th, 2017, I found contractors on our property cutting down trees, mowing down brush and widening a road. And uh, they were not supposed to be here. They had no authority to be here. Along the side of the levee road, stakes in the ground mark where the wall would go. The wall's gonna go down there. The 18 foot vertical concrete slab will go to the height of the existing levee so road. So they'll backfill this whole thing? They're gonna backfill this wedge and turn this two lane road into a six or eight lane road. And then the 18 foot tall steel bollards will rise above the road from the top of that 18 foot concrete wall. They're going to eliminate all of this, all of the mature trees. The Butterfly Center went to court to stop the seizure of its property. The case was dismissed. They have filed an appeal. We are all for border security. We are all for border enforcement. A wall is not the answer. If the wall were the solution, then everybody would be on board with it. What's happening on the border, Trevino Wright says, is a travesty. This is the largest private property grab in the history of modern America. And it is targeting people of color, poor people, those on the borderlands, and for what? You know, can you think of an incident of mass homicide, shootings, terrorism, anything in the last, you know, 20 years since 9-11 that have involved people crossing over the southern border? Not one. You know, this is a, a hateful, racist project. The damage to the center, its magnificent monarch butterflies that some are here, and the people and businesses could, Trevino Wright says, be irreparable. To be catastrophic, because we're not just talking about the closure of the National Butterfly Center or Benson Rio Grande Valley State Park. We're talking about all of the employees of those places losing their jobs. We're talking about people not flying in, renting cars, staying in the hotels, buying their gear at Academy, eating at the restaurants. I mean, the trickle down is enormous. Legal scholars say the power of eminent domain gives the government the upper hand. Over time, it may well prevail. 
but lawsuits by landowners could tie things up in the courts for years. Former Rio Grande City Mayor Ruben Villarreal. It's going to create a, a, a technology that's been built in the, since the 12th, 14th century that may or may not work. And keep in mind that when you build a good wall, the two best days of the walls, when you build it, when you tear it down. For many landowners along the Rio Grande Valley, the hope is the wall just never gets built.